today we're talking about Italy, a country that peaked in the 1500s and is just trying to coast off that success through its twilight years. Now Italian politics have been a roller coaster over the past year, but look out because over this week I see a drop coming. I'll get more into this later, but for the purposes of this intro, in Italy, in order to maintain the legal minimum amount of power to run the country, two pretty different political parties have had to shake hands and pretend to be best friends. And yes, it's as funny and dramatic as it sounds. Ironically enough, one of the only things these two parties currently in power can agree on is they're both firmly anti-establishment. There are three people that are central to this story. Because most of us aren't super well versed in the day to day of Italian politics, I'm just going to try to use American politicians to give you a rough idea of their stances. I think it's safe to say though that the comparisons are not perfect, so when you're typing out that angry message, cut me a little bit of slack. First, the leader of the Five Star Coalition, Luigi Di Maio. Now he can be thought of as your Italian Donald Trump surrogate. Before I go on, when I say he's like Trump, I am not referencing the constant barrage of lies, dumb statements, and insults. Just the conservative yet populist tendencies. This guy hasn't burnt every bridge in the center left yet, and that's going to be important later. His party's new, they want to spend a lot of government money, and they really, really don't like immigrants. On the other side, you have the leader of the League, Matteo Salvini. Now he's more your Italian surrogate for just your classic pre-2016 conservative, who really wants to balance the budget, cut entitlements, oh yeah, and he also really, really doesn't like immigrants. Now this has been a huge problem as, beyond making life hell for refugees, this coalition has not been able to agree on much. I mean, just imagine if Jeb Bush and Donald Trump were co-presidents. To resolve this problem, they brought in a third unelected person to serve as de facto leader, Giuseppe Conte. Now, Conte was an unelected professor. He was plucked from obscurity to mediate between the two coalition partners. And it's at this point that you can probably see why Italian political news has become one of the best reality TV shows of 2019. Why are we rebooting the real world right now when we have CNN International? Anyways, this guy Giuseppe Conte has, unfortunately enough, allowed both leaders to re-embrace their anti-establishment roots, as sure we're in power, but Conte is really the one signing the checks. Now this brings us to our story today. Uh, Salvini is pushing for them to get back in their seats next week and have a vote uh, as soon as possible on this. Um, it looks like that he has the sufficient votes to bring down this government. So it's just, you know, it's a matter of time. That's right. The Italian Jeb Bush has some cojones and recently said, you know what? I'm not working with Conte or the Five Star Coalition anymore. Let's have an early election in order to see if I can get a whole new set of co-workers. Now don't worry, my favorite reality TV show hasn't been cancelled quite yet. Just because he says he's going to walk off set doesn't mean he can. As you can imagine, Conte, the mediator's job, just got a lot harder. And he is really not happy with the situation. It's up to the interior minister in his role as senator and leader of his party to explain to the country and justify to voters who believed in the prospect of change the reasons that led him to interrupt the government's action abruptly. Oh man, Salvini, you got some explaining to do. Now before I move on with this story, I need to take a step back. Because while Italy and America are both democracies, they have some major differences. For example, in our system, you couldn't have this weird two-party, one-leader setup without electing someone with multiple personality disorder. In this case, though, Italy has a similar system to Israel, Europe, and most of the world's democracies. First, you have the parliament that functions as sort of a congress. The party with the majority in that parliament gets to be prime minister. So far, pretty standard. But here's where the drama happens. There are a ton of parties in this system, rather than just two party systems that we have set up here. Now this means that these small parties have to work together to get over 50% of the vote, which is where you get these odd coalitions merging. 
So after the election to distribute the seats in parliament, in order to not immediately trigger a second round of voting to redistribute the seats again, these two very different people had to say, you know what, I guess I can work with you. If you want to see an example of this failing, I recently made a video about Benjamin Netanyahu failing to put together a coalition majority and Israel's second attempt at elections are coming in September. With this in mind, what's going on here? We need to start with August 9th when Salvini, Italy's Jeb Bush, announced that he was going to push for a vote of no confidence on Giuseppe, the moderator and unelected leader. This would mean that Giuseppe would be out. Then in a move that nobody saw coming, this happened. In a raucous special session called at the height of summer holidays, Italian senators put the brakes on Interior Minister Matteo Salvini's race to early elections, voting to delay debate on a no-confidence motion against the current government. Now this is where things get scandalous. Because in order to get a new majority vote to overrule their current coalition partners, the five star coalition looked around and said, you know what, I think we can work with the center left democratic party opposition to reject the motion. So much drama. This is a cross party relationship. So alright, Italy's more traditional conservatives just totally broke up with the 5 star coalition and then the 5 star coalition looked around and hooked up with the newest cross party party they could find. This is where things really get crazy because… Non-league lawmakers are now exploring alternative coalitions to avoid disruptive new elections. We now have two new political groups, Slovini and his more traditional conservatives who are really, really trying to break everything in the system down so that there's no coalition and Italy will have to have new elections. And then you have everybody else who's trying to build any sort of new majority coalition that doesn't include Slovini so that it won't trigger new elections in Italy. Now you probably have a few questions here, starting with. But well, why doesn't the five star party just form a coalition with the center left democratic party that they just voted with? You know, to keep the government together. Well, that would be like Trump dumping Bush for Biden to be co-president. Not literally impossible, but man would they have to work some things out before they sign the final papers. Now spectators are looking at this situation and asking themselves, is a cross party coalition going to form in Italy? Negotiations are underway to see if these two parties could cobble together a majority and thus the formation of a new government that would avoid triggering new elections as soon as possible. So you might now be asking, well, why is any of this happening? Does Slovini, the Italian conservative trying to take down the government just really want to watch the world burn? Well, not quite. Salvini is maneuvering for Conti's job. For the past 14 months, the Interior Minister's far-right League Party has been junior partner in a populist coalition government with fewer seats than the anti-establishment five-star movement. But since then, the League's popularity has soared, while Five Stars has floundered. Yeah, the old school conservatives want to force a vote because they're killing it in the polls right now. So if they triggered a new election, they'd gain a lot of seats and subsequently a lot of power. This would be terrible for liberals and lead to a significant less of power for the five star party. Which is exactly why some people think we might soon see them swallowing their pride and forming this incredibly even odder coalition. I will say the latest news that's coming in as I'm writing this episode is, last Friday evening was the deadline for anybody wanting to call a snap election by late September and nobody actually called for that. Furthermore, it looks like the five star league coalition is actually getting back together again. With Slovini saying, I have confidence in Di Maio, there won't be a crisis. So just, you know, ignore the vote of no confidence I literally was trying to push through last week. Now this has been leading some people to ask, with your popularity peaking right now, why aren't you continuing to try to dismantle the Italian government? I mean, elections are a whole four years off if the government stays together. Well, there are two reasons I found. The first reason is that cross party coalitions that could have pushed Slovini out of the majority voting bloc 
between the center left and the five star parties. But there's a more nefarious reason. Italian prosecutors announced that they had opened an investigation following reports that Slovenia's aid had solicited Russian funding for the league via a secret oil deal. He might be surging in popularity right now, but triggering an election at the start of a Russian bribery investigation does not sound like something anybody would choose to do if they had literally any other options. So that's what's happening in the Italian government right now. The reality TV show has been renewed for another season. Join us on the next episode when Italy has to pass a federal budget. Slovenia wants tax cuts, Luigi wants handouts, and the European Union is continuing to intervene in their proposed budgets because they're accumulating way too much debt right now. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube! If you want to support independent nonpartisan news, remember to subscribe by clicking on this floating logo to the right of my head. Ring that bell so the freedom will continue to ring and give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.